Yes, good evening. Uh, welcome to the show. And uh, welcome to this video series. We're actually going to create uh, several different videos in this series, kind of revolving around the introduction, how to begin here with the Eve Echoes. Now, we've done a couple of uh, videos, a couple of live streams where we've talked about this, and now we're going to condense it into about 10, 12, maybe 15 minutes. So, Gregor, let's get started at the very beginning. Here we are. Eve Echoes, brand spanking new. The first thing we're going to do, if we've never logged into the game before, we're going to come up to a screen where we have to actually choose a race, right? So let's get into this screen. We're going to see our opening video here, kind of just the the little bit of the beginning uh, video screen, if you will, kind of giving us some cool graphics. And like so the Matrix. Forth about, yeah, about the clone, uh, so forth and so on here. And here now, we have to choose a race. Now, you and I had talked about this early on. What is the race to actually choose? We can click on any one of these, and it'll give us a description of this race uh, and tell us you know, a little bit about its background, maybe a little bit about its strengths and so forth. Gregor, why don't you give us a quick introduction to each of these four races? Yeah, I mean, I, I won't go too deep in each race, but the idea is they all have a different weapon type that they prefer. They all have a different uh, protection type, armor, shield. And you can see that in the screen that you're showing. Like, you can see all the different uh, race abilities and focuses. But this is really not important. So they haven't designed the game that it, as far as we've seen so far, that it locks you into any specific thing by choosing this. It's going to affect what ship you start out in, but you're not going to stay in that ship very long. What would you say, like a day? Maybe? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, here's the thing. Depending on how active you are with some of the trainings, guys, NetEase is being extremely generous. There's new ships in your daily logins. All right, so if you were deciding that you wanted to, to download the game and give it a shot, uh, the the new player benefits these uh, loyalty chests are extremely generous. Extre I mean, ships, actual ships in the loyalty chest. So very very cool. Just as a as a login, just come and play the game, and they're going to get you the tools to get you started. Yeah. So pick whichever race you want. If you're playing with a friend and you want to start out, there's something like what eight thousand systems in the galaxy. So starting with a race that's the same as a friend you're going to play with or, or set of friends you're going to play with might be important for positioning in the galaxy. So you don't have to, say, travel 70 systems away and rebase yourself close to them. So that's about the only benefit, though. I mean, I don't really see much else. The rest of this, guys, is kind of going through and cho choosing your avatar, choosing the player that you want to be, okay? Um, there is a couple of, of notes in here. You can refresh a lot of these and, and pick and choose as you want. I'm not going to finish going through this process because I'm not interested in, in activating a second pilot today. Um, however, um, <laughs> and I don't even know how to get back beyond this first screen here <laughs> we you, might, might, you, might, you might have to i might have to pick one uh yeah. either that or uh so here's what we'll do snake eyes and, throw up our splash page and, and uh and, while i reboot the app then gregor can continue yeah just so you know i mean you could have three uh characters on the same account so there's no <clears throat> you, you, you know if you want to try something else or start in something else you can absolutely do it I believe uh, there is a subscription in this game that you can get called Omega. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but but this gives you access to more things in the game. Uh, it's pretty cheap. You can actually pay for it with real dollars. I think it's 14, 15 bucks a month, or you can you can actually earn it in the game. You can earn your monthly subscription through uh, the in-game currency, so you don't have to pay any real dollars. Um, but anyways, I believe the subscription is per character. I don't know if it crosses accounts. Um, well, uh, that would make sense. We talked earlier and were was able to determine that our wallet and our skills training are unique to our clone. So if our wallet even is unique to the clone, then it stands to imagine, and the skills are unique to the clone, then it stands to reason that other items, including some of the extra trainings and researches and and uh, the ships and everything are still going to, again, be unique to the clone. So I wouldn't disagree with you there. I believe that, uh, that you're right, that this is basically three accounts uh, that you're allowed to run per login to the game. So now you're going to jump into an existing account because if you had started a new account, selected a race, we'd have to go through all the tutorials again. And there's no reason for us to show you tutorials. I mean, those are things you do in your, on your own. It walks you through a bunch of good in-game content. 
if you finished the tutorials and you sped through them and you really didn't absorb what they were saying or or maybe you uh, want to go back and cover some specific thing, why don't you show them how to get back and start a tutorial again? Absolutely. Anytime that uh, you hear anybody in this game reference punching your face, okay? That is taking your icon up here and that's just mashing it with the mouse button. Anytime you punch your face, that's where you're going to go. So if you wanted to get back, and actually I didn't even take you to the right place anyway, we're going to click right here on Advanced Tutorial. Once you go through the original tutorial and you click here on Advanced Tutorial, which is going to stay up for some time, you can always click this back arrow key and get back to your basic tutorial. You'll notice that I've already completed it, but I can go back in and I can run it at any time. I can re-accept that mission and run it again. I can come back in here and take a look if I if I don't remember exactly what I want to do as far as upgrading tech levels or activating a ship uh, or going in and hitting rats, okay? Anything like that, these tutorials here are actually very, very good and can be revisited at any time. Yep. So let's assume you made it through all the tutorials and you're sitting in your starter frigate. There's multiple ship classes in this game. There's frigates, and then you move up to destroyers, then you move up to cruisers, and go ahead and open that ship tree real quick. That's what I was I was screen. actually just getting ready to go. Yeah, I went to the wrong place, but uh, oh, let's see, you want the ship you want the tree. actual yeah, on let me, the bottom right there. There we go. Thank you very much. Here we go. So if you click on one of those races, especially the four center ones, the outsides are like pirates and ancillary races, but you can see if you had picked Kaldari. You would end up in that level one, and you see the triangle there that's indicating a frigate. You'd start out in that level one Ibis. And <clears throat> as you move up the skill tree, it's tech levels. And as you move out the skill tree, it's more options within that tech level. So, tech level one, the only thing you can get is a destroyer. And uh, as you go up in tech levels and as you accumulate resources in the game, You'll be able to move both up vertically and out horizontally to select not not just the tech level, but the type of ship within the tech level you'd want to get. You can review all these ships at any time in the ship tree to kind of plot out maybe where you'd like to be. So let's talk about ships just a little bit. Let's click on one of those ships. And actually, let's start with the Ibis because it's the first ship in this Kaldari tree. And let's just look at a little bit of data about the ship. So this ship is telling you. It's an Ibis. It's a frigate. Right below that, you got these, I don't know, it reminds me of like the Predator, the movie Predator. You remember the little clock on his on his wrist there he had when he counted down? Kind of looks like that. But <laughs> yeah, watch out because this, this ship will blow up when it gets to zero. <laughs> that's right. So that's telling you uh, the dashes are uh, basically the, the level of slot. So the one dash with the two is saying a low slot, and the three dash with the one is saying you have one high slot. So you have one high slot and two low slots. Uh, and those slots, high slots are weapons. There's a mid slot that the ship doesn't even have, which is based around uh, electronic warfare, drones, things like that you can put in those slots. And the low slots are typically more around support items. So maybe shield boosters or afterburners. You'll, we'll get to that later, but just know that, that there's three sh uh, slot varieties. Why don't we go up to a ship that has drones and mid slots and rigs and all that so they can see those icons too. Um, so if you go up in the tech tree here, you see this ship here doesn't have a drone, which would be on the far left in front of the high slot. Uh, yeah, you're going to probably want to go a little higher up the tech tree there. There we go. Oh, there, there, it comes. there you go. So that little uh, claw looks like one of those machine claws. You know, you put in a put in a dollar and waste it because the claws are too weak to do anything. It's that never icon, a waste. It's, never it's, a waste at Pizza Planet. It's never those ten seconds of joy last forever. Uh, but the, the claw icon that's drones. So that's how many drones the ship can uh, can manage. Then you've got four high slots, two mid slots that we were talking about before, three low slots, and then you've got combat rigs. You can have two. And engineering rigs, you can have two. I believe they actually, for some reason in the interface, use some different terminology sometimes. But the circles, or uh, the uh, the broken circle there is the uh, symbolism for combat rigs, and the bracketed square is the symbolism for um, engineering rigs. And rigs are a little something else we'll get into later, but let's go ahead and look down this tree here. So what is it saying? It's saying this ship is a tech level five ship. 
can be insured for repairs. Uh, you're going to see right away when you start doing these tutorials, you're going to get these insurance vouchers. And those insurance vouchers help cover the cost if your ship gets blown up. Let me kind of clue you in. Your ship's probably going to get blown up at least once. It's got, probably going to happen. It's happened to almost everybody in the game at least once. Uh, it could be a player that blows you up. could be uh, you're moving into a zone with a policing function that blows you up after you've done something hostile to somebody. But it's it's built into the game, right? Uh, there are ways to avoid PvP or avoid being blown up, um, but it's a risk reward thing. So you're, the more risky and more rewarding the things are you do in the game, typically there's a balance to that. Uh, so, anyways, uh, below that you're going to see medium missile torpedo operation bonus per level. This is based around skills you get in the game. So you get these skills in the game, and we won't go to the skill tree yet. We'll get there in a second, but you get these skills in the game. And you can train them up to level five. So they start, at, you, you op unlock it at level one, and then you move it all the way up to five. And for each level you get, for this example, a medium missile torpedo operation, you're adding 5% to the torpedo or missile velocity when this thing shoots a missile. Now, this is a missile centric ship. So while you can put almost anything on any ship, right? You could make it a cannon sh ship, you could make it a laser ship. You probably want to stick to the uh, bonuses that the ship gets, right? So if you're gonna, if you like missiles and you want to use missiles in the game, you're probably gonna want to get a ship that has bonuses around missiles. And if you go ahead and scroll down a little bit more, this is a cruiser, so cruiser command applies. You got some basic info about what the overall defense is. Let's go ahead and hit those three dots next to next to uh, basic info. And your ship is gonna have the same data. So any ship you're in, you're gonna be able to open up the screen. The appearance, you know, how it looks. If we go to traits and descriptions, uh, yeah, if, I guess if you want to go into the skill, this is going to give you that same data, right? So it's going to give you the skill based stuff. Um, and if you go to attributes and fittings, this is kind of more of the meat and potatoes of the data around the ship. How much cargo you can hold in it if you're out there collecting cargo. And then you have in each ship, you have shield, armor, and structure. And we'll show you this in the display later, but the shield, armor, and structure are your, are your three kind of layers of defense, right? So first they got to get through your shields, and then they got to get through your armor, and then your structure is your hull, right? So they got to burn through your hull, and then eventually, once they do that, you're dead. And you can see each layer of defense has different properties for resistance. So at the first one on the shield in this example, it's got 0% EM. So there's four damage types in the game, EM, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. And all the weapons you have are going to do one of those or more. Some weapons do multiple types of damage, like a missile will cover, could cover multiple areas. Or you might be doing one specific type of damage. It just depends, and we'll have, we'll have to show you that in a later video. But in this case, it has no resistance to EM. So any damage you get that's EM-based is going to go apply fully to the shields. If on the section below there, where it has 20% resistance to thermal, if somebody hits you with thermal damage, 20% of that would be ignored and 80% would be by your shield. So Once this is make... almost like a form of mitigation, right? Like if, if somebody shoots with 100 attack points, then this, these figures are the amount of attack points that would actually impact and hit the shield. These are hit points against the shield because the rest of the damage would be ignored, correct? That's right. So these are mitigating percentages, right? So it's going to, in that, in this example, it's going to mitigate, the shield is going to mitigate 20% of the thermal damage, right? If they're shooting you with thermal. And then once you burn the shields down, it's going to go to start hitting your armor. And then once you burn the armor down, it's going to go to your hole. And they've got to kind of work through all three layers of that onion to kill you, uh, which still happens surprisingly fast in some situations, but it, it is, uh, it is quick. <laughs> yeah. And so beneath that, we've got capacitors. So just like any kind of uh, like your car, right? You have a battery. Um, but the capacitor is like uh, an excess pool of energy. I mean, just like a capacitor is in real life, right? It's, it's storing a certain amount of energy. Because when you start activating things on your ship in battle, like you're firing your missiles launchers, you've got a shield recharger going, you're burning your afterburners those are going to draw more power possibly than you produce. And that's going to get sucked out of your capacitor pool. 
And in reality, for most ships and most situations, when you're in combat, you're probably going to be using more sh more energy than your ship produces. And so that pool is going to shrink down. And as, when that pool finally hits zero, uh, your modules that require that excess energy are going to shut off. Now, it doesn't mean your ship's going to come to a dead stop or anything. Your basic engines still work. Uh, but say you want it to warp somewhere to get away, you may not have the power to do that. If you have a shield recharger going, it probably can't operate. And so you're getting some data around here, how long it takes, 474 seconds in this case, to recharge it from zero to full, how much it stores. Uh, and, and capacitor management is an important part of your gameplay that will come later around power management on your ship. Uh, but below that, it tells you how many targets the ship can lock, its signature radius, which is kind of like its bubble of existence in the game. Uh, how fast it travels in space, how fast it warps. Uh, I think that's probably enough of an intro into the, kind of the ship stats piece right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and close out of this. And so any ship you get, you're going to want to look at those stats. You're going to want to evaluate what it's good at, what its failings are, maybe try to balance those out and play to its strengths. Um, so if you click on your character icon again, and this will be tapping on a phone or clicking. Punch my face. Later. Punch your face. Punch, punch me in the face. And you click on that character icon there. You're going to see we got data about DJ. So if you want to hunt him down in the game, you now know his name. Just come uh, punch this guy in the face. Punch that's him. Right. That's right. So you're getting your player ID. Uh, your player ID is unique to you. And you, if you win, win and if you get into contracts and certain things like that, the player ID might be an easier way to find somebody rather than dealing with the names people have in the game because sometimes people love to use really uh, eclectic character sets. And so finding them by the name could be difficult. But if they give you your, their player ID, you can search them out that way. Now player see... ID and, and the numerical player ID is one thing. I will say this. This is one thing that is a little disappointing to me early on is the inability to change your username. So hopefully that's something that NetEase can get behind here uh, before too long. Obviously, they're pretty busy with an early launch. But if I was asking for an early fix or an early uh, modification, it would be to let me change my silly computer automated generated username and let me actually be, you know, something like punch my face. At least know? once. At least once would be nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in Just this to case, get, get rid of the automated system. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I agree with that. That would be nice to at least have one name change allowed. Because a lot of people, maybe in the character creation, didn't really pay attention or see that, or maybe ended up with a weird name like Cur69 Fang, <laughs> which is just awkward at multiple levels. But anyway, nobody so we, knows it's me. I can't troll anybody because well, they don't know it's me. Everybody knows it's you now. Everybody knows. So that's good. We, Here you go, can, community. <laughs> Come we can find see me. he's in uh, a system called. Myla, M-A-I-L-A. It's a 0.4 security system. So something you're going to want to know out of the gate is this game, this whole, all these systems in the galaxy are rated at a security level. And that security level can be as high as one and I believe as low as negative one. But anything that is uh, 1.0 to 0.5, 0 0.5 is considered high security and you're very protected there. If somebody tries to attack your ship or do something nefarious, the Concord police, which are like the galactic police, are going to come kill them. And you're, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even think I've seen anybody try to attack anybody in that high space because it's pretty much instant death. Oh, um, no, I did. I did on did day, day one. Yeah, I was instantly killed. Uh, but I didn't know any better. <laughs> See, I was, not a, I was not an EVE Online player. So the, the theory of high security and low security and no security space, that was not something that I had grasped at that point. Yeah, I came right out and immediately went to start PvPing. Uh, lasted for about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Didn't last long at all. I was killed immediately, and I was in one of those high security systems uh, near Jita. So and Don't yeah, worry. I, you do get a warning, even if you ignore it. Like DJ clearly. I did. I did ignore it, but I mean, I didn't think I would die. I just thought that I was, you know, going to get chased down or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in some way, the, the 0.5 to one is a really safe place to hang out. Uh, the rewards, meaning a lot of the uh, mining things or 
or encounters are not super difficult and don't pay out super well. But in the early game, it's probably still good enough for a while. When you get to below 0.5 all the way down to 0.1, so 0.1 to 0.4, uh, that's called low security. And in low security, there's no Concord police flying around. But if you attack somebody in low security, you'll get something called a criminal timer. And you'll see it on your display. It'll be a red icon. And if you click on that red icon, I'll tell you how much longer it has. The default, I believe, right now is nine minutes. So if you attack somebody, you get this nine-minute timer. And uh, the way you move between systems in this game, all those 8,000, is through something called warp gates. And you've got to fly to a gate. And you've got to click jump and you will actually jump between two different systems. Well, if you have that crime timer and you go to one of those gates in low sec or high sec, they have guns on them and they will shoot you because you're a criminal, right? And we all want to be criminals, but none of us want to be shot. So just make sure that timer goes all the way away before you actually do something like that. So the same is true for stations. And you can see the icon on the screen right now uh, where it says a Cora 0.3 that he's heading to a Stargate, a warp gate. And <clears throat> again, that's his way of moving between systems. And if he had a crime timer up and he got in the range of this gate, it would instantly blow him up. Uh, so maybe in the later game you can survive that. I don't know. But at least in the early game, we're all pretty vulnerable to getting blown up by gates and station guns. Because as you'll see in a second here, see those little blue things on a screen? Those are gate guns. <clears throat> and if you have a crime timer, don't go near those things. So rule of thumb, if you're out there, if you get a crime timer, uh, don't go near a station or a, a stargate until that crime timer reaches zero and disappears. And it still happens to people all the time because they forget and they try and warp and they get blown up. It happens, what do you say, daily? Daily you see this happen to people? Oh my gosh, I, I barely caught myself today. I, you, we were out earlier hunting, and I barely caught myself today. It was like, oh my gosh, I am literally right here by a gate. And, and didn't even realize that we were just warping around, and then there we were. Almost dead, I, can't, so. I can't look at the ship without thinking about a paper airplane that did a nosedive into the ground. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like it's like love one of those ship. paper airplanes that just you threw it, it hit the ground. It'll never fly right again. But, I love uh, this ship, and look at all ship. look at all those guns. You guys can actually see. You can actually you know zoom in uh, and and look. There's a gun. There's guns. There's guns. They got guns so, everywhere. I love so, it. All so let's guns. let's head back to the character page here before we go too far into this. Uh, let's head back to the character page, and and we kind of talk to you about what securities and systems are. Um, for some reason, I'm waiting for the character page to load. Oh, are you waiting? Oh, yeah. sorry, I didn't I didn't click it. I was on the uh, menu. Okay. <laughs> yes. so sorry. You, can, you. you can also see in that bio page that DJ is an Omega subscriber. So if you were to use Plex in the game to buy your subscription, you can buy a basic, a standard, or a duo bundle. And if you select any of those and then hit the item description, it will tell you what you're getting for that subscription. So you can see it's moving out and saying you get uh, 30 more skill points a day, right? You can access 300 more skills. And you can move through these and see if it's something you want to do. Uh, access more ships go past tech level seven. There's some trading implications of when you want to use the marketplace, where you can use it, uh, stuff like that. Um, unlock contracts features. So, I mean, if you can get it on your primary character, it's probably going to be something you want long-term in the game. Again, you can buy it with Plex and Plex can be purchased with real dollars or it can be purchased with in-game currency, which you get through mining and building things and killing hostels and doing missions and doing encounters and there you go so if he goes to the store and you see that purchase with isk <clears throat> you're going to be purchasing plex with in-game currency so if there is a way to get it for free essentially based on time and there's a way to get it through dollars it's your call uh, so let's go back to the character screen again uh, you can see how much and see that z icon that's the icon for in-game misc. And as you can see, DJ is loaded. Uh, one thing to tell you is 
these things cannot be stolen from you. All right? So nobody can come take your risk from you. I mean, they can con you into giving up your risk, I suppose, but they can't take it from you. So nobody can take these. Nobody can take the stuff that's in your item hanger. Uh, the only time you can have stuff taken is when you're out flying your ship and it's sitting in your cargo hold and somebody destroys you. Uh, there is an RNG that determines what items that were in your cargo hold or on your ship end up in your loot box and they can take those things. So they're not going to get everything on your ship or everything in your cargo hold, but they'll get a portion of it that survives the encounter. Um, so go ahead and, and you can see, by the way, he's in, he's tech level five and we'll talk about that later. And he's got 1.463 million skill points. Skill points is how you, you acquire them and you move up tech levels by acquiring a certain number of them. Uh, he's in a corporation called Black Sales. Obviously, they're super, um, they're basically the Boy Scouts of the Galaxy. They go around yeah. helping old people across <laughs> the streets with a name like that. I mean, sure, right? Yes. Watch uh, out for the Black Sales where we are the super nicest people in the galaxy. Yeah, they're, they're, they're totally uh, benevolent, I guess. Uh, so if you click on Combat Log, let's go ahead and look at that real quick. <laughs> and you can see by his combat log, he's been up to nothing nefarious or bad, right? So, mm -hmm. so these are people he's killed. Um, it's pretty low, actually. I'm kind of surprised. I would have thought there would been because more there. I'm a Boy Scout. Okay, I'm a Boy Scout, and I don't like to kill people. These people just came at me. I had to defend myself. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if that is exactly what happened, but we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> So this is if you click on one of those. So say you do get in a fight in space and you kill somebody or you die. It'll tell you who they were. It'll give you some kind of high level stats around who had the final blow and who did the top damage. But it'll also show you what their loadout was. So if somebody's coming around killing you a lot, maybe you want to see, well, hey, why are they killing me? What are they using that's so good? You can get an idea of what that stuff is. Uh, you can also, I believe, export from the upper corner if that was something you were into. Uh, kind of looking, okay, so you can export it to a channel or a contact. So you can share this battle log, so to speak, right? <clears throat> uh, so go ahead and close out of that. Okay. All right. So picking back up here. Uh, so the insurance vouchers, you're going to collect some of those. You're going to collect them through um, the... God, the tutorials, sorry. Yeah, the advanced and, tutorials is where they drop. Uh, and they give you a couple. though. You'll get like a handful with each of these different uh, advanced training missions and so forth. The cool thing to note about these is that at the early level, this will fully replace your ship, Gregor. This will replace up to a Tier 3 ship or a Mark mm -hmm. 3 ship. And it doesn't mean without these you cannot replace your ship. It just means it's going to cost you more ISK. So the insurance is offsetting some of the cost. So then I'll tell you how many you have anyways. Uh, metals is an area for like uh, just character bling as far as I can tell. There's nothing of real value there or anything to really pay attention to. It is a nice turtleneck I'm wearing. Yeah, I like, that. I like the flight jacket. It's very Star Wars-y. Mm -hmm, I uh, dig it. So go ahead and close out of the character screen. You even have a little pocket protector right there, you can tell. Uh, yep. <laughs> All and, right, continuing. And and if you punch your face again, now we're going to do multiple videos here because these we want to keep these short enough to digest, but not so long as to run on. But this was the character screen, um, and we're going to cover all these other components in later videos. Would you say that's fair? One thing we will tell you is see that set shortcuts up there. Set shortcuts is going to let you. Uh, you've got those three icons under your character right now: inventory fitting and news or encounters and if you click on one of those uh that'll take you directly there you can customize those which one of those buttons comes up based on the set shortcuts you can unselect one and select something else and it will take its spot there you go so this is how you can set some of those shortcuts i think probably the next video should be about skills and fittings what do you think Absolutely. And this one will com uh, probably come uh, hopefully maybe tomorrow uh, or very, very shortly thereafter. But uh, we'll, we'll spend some time diving in detail into what each of these areas are and what they do, because this game 
at first glance is incredibly complicated. Do not feel overwhelmed. Don't feel overwhelmed, especially if you've never played EVE before, you've never played an EVE product. That's okay. We welcome you. This is an exciting new game. It is extremely comprehensive, very detailed, and that's why it can be so much fun for everybody. There's something for everybody to do, whether it's mining, whether it's research, whether it's refining, whether it's PvP, whether it's PvE. You don't have to do it all. You can focus on your strength. And these areas uh, can help you do that, particularly the skills. And we will talk about that coming up in our very next video. So please, if you have questions about anything that we've seen here so far today, please leave your comments in the video below. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and uh, click on the bell to get future notifications of whenever we post new content. And we'll try to keep it uh, exciting and, you know, fun and, you know, maybe pictures of pigs flying somewhere. I don't know. We'll do something kind of goofy and just make sure that you guys stay interested. But please do subscribe to the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave your comments below. And we will answer them right there on YouTube, okay? My name is Ultimate DJs. His name is the Anonymous Llama. We appreciate you being here on Exploring Eve Echoes with Ultimate DJs. Another video coming up very soon. In the meantime, say la vie. Take care. Bye-bye.